lines it up. Home run ball. He's got Mims. Mims is there. He's at the 15 tier. Touchdown. Welcome in, Falcons fans. It's your boy Bryce Lewis back at it again for more Atlanta Falcons content. And in today's video, we're going to talk about some potential trade and free agent options that have been connected to the Atlanta Falcons as potential QB1s for the future for this team as that is going to be the highly debated question of the entire offseason for this team until they fill that hole at quarterback. Raheem Morris having a press conference Monday. Maybe we'll know more about what they wait they may want. We haven't heard anything about what they may be aiming for in terms of the quarterback position, but we're going to talk about four guys today who could be QB1 next year for the Atlanta Falcons when week one comes around and definitely appreciate any feedback from you guys and hopefully you guys like this video moving forward, but let's get into it. And we're going to start with the most popular guy who is a trade potential in Justin Fields, a man who grew up here in Georgia, played high school football here in Georgia, went to Georgia for a year, even though the Jake Fromm debacle happened, went to Ohio State, led him to a college football playoff, then was drafted by the Bears has not maybe had the career that he maybe was thought to have had coming into the league. Obviously, the Bears over the last three years haven't been the best franchise. They've had one of the worst offensive lines in the league. Justin Fields does get hit a lot, and he's had his fair share of injuries. And then a lot of people question, is he a, a good enough thrower of the football? But we know with him, his best trait, at least as far as we've seen through his first uh, few years, is the fact that he can run. He can make those Houdini type plays. He is a guy who can do things that certain quarterbacks can't. And you can see the talent on display when you watch him. When Justin Fields has one of those games, you can just see the talent on display. Now, he's only had a career high 17 touchdowns this past year at 16 and 9. But he did have his career high in completion percentage with 61.4%. Uh, and also in uh passing yards as well. And the, that connection to the Falcons honestly kind of has a bit of a storybook kind of, you know, scenario. Georgia kid comes back to Atlanta to lead the hometown team to become the face of the franchise and potentially lead them to success. Because remember, if the Falcons make that move, this isn't a rebuilding situation. This is a work expected to compete with whoever they sign. So Justin Fields will immediately be put in a situation where he's coming from a franchise where maybe those expectations have never been there his entire career up to this point. But now he's entering a franchise where those expectations have advanced. And now how will he respond to that? How will he, you know, be able to bounce back from that? You know, and, and Justin is a guy who, for me, I think he again, has all the potential in the world if you remember the game he played against the falcons this season you saw you you saw the talent you saw the the the, the ability to make high level nfl throws and the, the, in that game i think maybe you'll be like if he's gonna play like that then why couldn't he be the face of our franchise potentially now you also have some people who feel like that he's just too erratic is it doesn't doesn't read coverages enough you know, some people may believe he is a one read and scramble type of guy. You know, some people look at him and think that he'll never be what people think he could be. You know, Justin Fields is only 24, still very young, still has, I think, a lot of improvement to still make. But, you know, when you're with a franchise that has been bad and hasn't been well ran, that can sometimes affect a player. Uh, one of the main examples I've always brought up before was Matthew Stafford. Matthew Stafford was a guy who, when he was traded to the Rams, a lot of people questioned if Matthew Stafford was good enough, if, if he really was him or was he just all hype, you know, especially after being in the league for so long and not taking Detroit anywhere. Because we we have this impression in the league where the quarterback is that good. It doesn't matter how bad things are around him. He should be able to do something. Some people question that. Then he got on a team that was better ran, better coaching, better weapons, better everything, and they won a Super Bowl. It, in a way, if Justin Fields was traded to Atlanta, that's kind of a similar situation. Better weapons. You would assume, especially with, with, with uh, Zach Robinson coming in, being the new OC, a lot of people are, are very high on him, thinking bringing that McVay-style concept offense to Atlanta. Justin Fields may be able to thrive in an offense like that. You know, obviously the line is better than what the Bears are getting. We obviously have better weapons than what the Bears gave him. Outside of, you know, they tried a little bit harder this Bears this past year getting him DJ more. But 
you know, we 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 have a better system right now set up for him to have success if he was traded here. Now, just the question is, do you think he will be able to take advantage of that? You know, like I said, he's a guy who the fan base is split on. They they don't really know. They're not really sure. They don't know if they should be enamored with him. They don't know if, if you know, he is the right guy. But like I said, Georgia boy. So that connection is there. Big thing for him is Fields is going to be due for a contract after this coming season. So if you're the Falcons and you make a move like this, you will have one year to basically judge, do we pay him elite quarter, like franchise quarterback money, which is growing, it feels like, every offseason. You guys are getting highest paid all the time. And, you know, when that happens, usually quarterbacks nowadays, when you pay them, take up a quarter of your cap. So the question is, do you believe that Justin Fields is worth that? And he'll have one year to prove that to you if you make the trade. Now, we've heard rumors that if the Falcons wanted to make that trade, they may only have to give up a second, maybe that Calvin Ridley second, especially if Jacksonville can get that extension done with him and maybe something else. But, you know, we're, we're still trying to figure out what the Bears are going to do at the quarterback position anyway. But Justin Fields, I think, is the most popular guy out of all the free agent and trade options that are available. And he is the guy who probably has the most potential. He also is one of the few guys who actually can be here for long term. The other two guys that I'll discuss are more short term options. Justin Fields has a great opportunity to be a long term solution if it works out. It just depends what does Terry Fontenot think of him? What does Zach Robinson think of him? And what does Raheem Morris think of him? If that is a direction they want to go in. And we've heard reports that if the Bears do move off Justin Fields, they're going to make that decision sooner rather than later. They're not going to wait till the draft. You know, they, they, they're going to want to move him maybe even before free agency begins and then be able to go ahead and go into that 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 new league year with a fresh mindset for them. And also with the Falcons, if you make that move, that gives you an idea of, okay, we have our building block at quarterback. Now we can go from there and decide what we want to do. So it will be very interesting to see if that is a person that Falcons fans want. If you want Justin Fields, leave Justin Fields down in the comments or give me your thoughts on why or why not you think Justin Fields would be a good fit for the Atlanta Falcons. He's a guy who, again, has all the talent in the world to be good. We've seen the flashes, but can't he put it together? Is it the Bears? Is it him? Is it, I mean, it could be both, but would coming to Atlanta, do you think we could elevate him? That's going to be the big question if you make a move for Justin Fields. Then we get into some of the older quarterbacks. The second most connected guy in free agency connected to the Falcons is Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson is a guy who... Super Bowl champion. He's done great things in his career. You know, he he's a guy who traded to Denver. Didn't work out the way he expected it to. Especially him and Sean Payton. It didn't work out. But a guy who I think still plays good football at this point in his career. This last season, he had 26 touchdowns and eight interceptions. Which, think about that stat line. It's not bad. But the biggest thing about Russell Wilson is, even with that stat line, if you watch him play... The biggest issue with him is he's not special anymore. And I think that is why people are hesitant with Russell. You know, it's funny because a lot of these players are trying to connect them to the Falcons and Russell. But Russell, I think, could still be good. I think Russell Wilson is still a good quarterback. I just don't think he's the Russell Wilson that we all were like, that's one of the best cool QBs of the game anymore, which makes sense. He's been in the game for a while, wear and tear, age happens, happens to you, you know, and Denver is still going to be on the hook for a lot of the money that is owed to him. So if the Falcons were able to acquire him in free agency, the perception is you probably wouldn't have to pay crazy money just because he's getting a lot of his money still paid for by the Denver Broncos, unless Russell decided to let him off the hook, which I don't see happening. You know, and, and in Atlanta could be a potential good fit. Still is a bit mobile. The only thing with him is one of the big issues in Denver, especially, is that Russell was reportedly getting a very big head. You know, apparently he had his own stuff, own locker, own office. You know, he was he was very much treated like he was the end all be all of that franchise, and that rubbed some players the wrong way. But I think Sean Payton humbled him a little bit. But in the process, Sean Payton. 
Peyton also rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. And so they were back on Russell's side by the end of it. Just seeing how that situation played out. He's a guy who, again, that is a short-term solution. That is not a long-term solution. That is not a, yeah, this guy is going to be the guy to get us over the hump for years to come. That is a, we think we can build a roster this coming year and win a Super Bowl. And we think that Russell can play well enough to get us there. So this is one of the ones that I'm like, eh, I'm not the biggest fan of. But it's not because I don't think he'll come here and be decent or I think he'll just lay a complete egg. I just don't. It, 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 the big thing for me with this new regime is that I just feel like you would want a guy that you're going to know is going to be there for years, not a couple of years, you know, because a couple of years to me just feels like it's pointless and then have to go through this again. We're still trying to find a quarterback. Eventually, you want to just have that answer known and non uh and it's not no longer a concern or no longer a worry to me that's just me on on, on that that's just me when it comes to if you know if that should be where we go right then we have kirk cousins kirk cousins is a guy who again coming off an achilles injury he's had some really good seasons in minnesota Again, short-term quarterback. He is not a long-term guy who is like, he will lead us to the promised land. He will be here for years to come. He may only play a year or two more. And it's the same. The only difference is he's, he's not really mobile. The, for Justin and Russell are mobile, but Kurt really isn't mobile. And so the, the question is, do you, do you want him in Atlanta? He is probably the, my least wanted guy out of everybody to me. Like, Kirk Cousins doesn't move me. We know about his record in prime time. We know about just how it seems like he never shows up sometimes in the big moments. And again, Kirk Cousins just, just to me just does not fit Atlanta Falcons. He just does not fit being quarterback of the Atlanta Falcons to me. He does not fit that. He he gives me more of a, you know, it's it just not Atlanta vibe, you know? So he's a guy who I just, I don't see that being a great fit, even though we've heard people connected. And especially we're hearing he may want $35, $40 million. Um, I'm good on that. And I hope the Falcons are too. That's something or a direction I wouldn't go down in my personal opinion when it comes to the quarterback position but forgot to mention this too if you want russell wilson mention russell wilson down below if you weren't kirk cousins mention kirk cousins down below you know we'll see who 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 people view as maybe potential the right options for this team at quarterback and now let me go wild card in there that a lot of people there was chatter about before he was traded now there could be chatter again trey lance trey lance is a guy who we coming into the league, very raw prospect. But a lot of people think he had a lot of talent. I think he wasn't in the right situation in San Francisco. He was expected to lead a team to a Super Bowl while learning the game. And sometimes that those timelines don't mesh. And I think that affected him. I think that affected, you know, the perception of him. Trade to the Cowboys to be a backup. But we've heard rumors that depending on what happens in the quarterback market this offseason, maybe Dallas can dangle him out there. Maybe get some capital back for him and somebody's willing to take a flyer. Falcons were connected to Trey Lance before. You know, and, and now do you go down that route? Again, it's the same situation. He's a guy who people view as he just needs more experience. He just needs more playing time. He just needs the ability to play. And, and grow and you have to let him grow some people think he could have a jordan love type of trajectory where you know jordan love played four years and still had his growing pains when he played because at the end of the day you can sit here and you know say that you can sit behind a guy but sometimes there's just certain things you won't be able to grow through until you play and as the season went on with green bay as you saw this year you saw his ascension you saw how much he improved you saw the, the the growth that he had 
And now he's about to be a highly paid quarterback by Green Bay because they feel like they have their guy. Do you believe he could be that for the Falcons? Is that a, a, a rock that you would want to turn? You know, do you do you think that he could potentially be QB one? I feel like again, it's a wild card. I'm not saying this is something that's likely. I just would not be surprised because it feels like the media always connects every quarterback to Atlanta. But maybe something you can look into. And again, it just depends on how do you feel about Trey Lance as a quarterback. How do you feel about him in his his long term trajectory? And do you think he'd be the right guy? Because again, you probably want to find someone who is more more suited to be the quarterback for a while, not a guy that you know Russell and Kurt bring to the table where that's only a year or two. So we'll have to see. But, you know, those are just four guys that I have just discussed to you guys. I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts on other guys that you think could potentially be a quarterback option in free agency or the trade. I will do another video on the college quarterbacks for another day. So definitely stay tuned. Subscribe to the channel for that if you want to see that. If you like this, like the video for sure. And like I said, if you think Justin Fields is the right guy for the job, Leave them in the comments. If you think Russell Wilson is the right guy for the job, leave it in the comments. And if you think Kirk Cousins or Trey Lance also is the same way, leave it down below or just give your reasoning on why you think so-and-so is or is not a good fit for the Atlanta Falcons. So definitely appreciate you guys tuning in for this video. Hopefully you guys liked it. Let me know in the comment section down below and everything like that. But that's all I got for you guys. See you next time.